So, did you have a good lunch? And please don't uh, doze off. Uh, please uh, 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 you know, let's listen uh, with uh, our hearts that are attentive. So, in the previous hour, uh, we talked about uh, uh, what uh, true uh, education is, and we said that it is to educate so that we become true sons and daughters of God, and that there's uh, a human education and a knowledge education, and but uh, human education is more important, and um, uh, but the all the educational institutions that are educating our young people today, however, have a, a very little in terms of human education. Uh, they do they do a, a knowledge education and a technical education, but uh, those that but what, but but they are not uh, educating the human beings uh, who can uh, uh, have proper dominion over those uh, technology and and, uh, and knowledge. So then, the true education, when we ask what that is, it is. Uh, it is education to, so that we can become our sons and daughters of God. So, uh, where is that? Where is where is that ideal going to be? Where is that idea going to be? So, that has to be not the ideal of humans, but uh, the ideal of God. Uh, what the, what kind of ideal did, human, did God have for human beings when He created us? That has to be the uh, focus of that uh, human education. So that ideal. So, and so that to uh, to accomplish the three great blessings then has to be the. And that is also the purpose of a creation, and that is God's will. And we learned that through the Bible. And so then the, uh, uh, Matthew 7, 21, uh, so that uh, uh, people who live according to the will of the, God, of the Father will go to the kingdom of heaven. So then the three great uh, blessings. And, and, then, and so then the, you know, Genesis 1, 28, it says that uh, uh, he uh, created us uh, in, in his, according to his image, and he created us a uh, man and woman. And he gave us the three blessings to uh, multiply, be fruitful, and have dominion. And so these has to be these uh, three great blessings have to be the ideal of education. That is how we can become God's uh, sons and daughters. But today, uh, we, there are many many institutions in the world uh, for education, uh, but uh, but uh, but none of those uh, schools or nations are, are edu- edu- educating in this way. So. So uh, we're not educating people to become uh, the, uh, God's sons and daughters. So then, uh, so uh, God's ideal uh, is to um, uh, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion, and that that has to be the ideology of uh, uh, education. And then the, we have to resemble God, and so we have to uh, uh, we resemble His perfection. And that is to perfect our character, and then the we have to. Uh, we have to uh, resemble uh, his uh, multiplication, so we have uh, children, and then and we have, uh, for that purpose, we uh, we marry, uh, we have a form of four-position foundation, and uh, have a, a sons and daughters, and to multiply. And then that is the uh, uh, perfection of the family. And then we have to dominate uh, all of uh, all things, and so that is the environment. And so God, uh, so he uh, created the environment, and he created human beings to dominate that, to have dominion over that. And so he, as he, so he gave us eyes because so that we could have dominion over things that can be seen. He gave he gave us ears so we could have dominion over things that can be heard. He gave us a mouth so that we can uh, have dominion over things that can be eaten. Uh, so uh, that is why these things were created. So everything is a, uh, and then the the human beings are the. Uh, the crystallization of the whole uh, creation, and so we have to have a dominion over that, have the, the nature of dominion. So that m- means that we must know the uh, shimjong of God when he created, and just as God invested all his heart and, and uh, love, and so the, then we always must have that uh, uh, shimjong and uh, love as we exercise dominion over nature. And so, the, so these are three blessings. So why are these the most precious blessings for God? The, there is no greater blessing from his point of view. So that's why we call them the three great blessings. So then why is it that the first, why is it the first, uh, is the perfection of character so, so, so precious? Because God comes into us. He's going to come into us and dwell in us. And we are the te- temple of God. And so then the, the human beings themselves are, then become our God. And so that what we, uh, what we say, what we uh, think, uh, everything, because God is within us, uh, that we are doing that all that uh, with God, and then there is nothing more precious than that. Even the Creator it comes into me, and 
I attend the uh, Creator within myself. That is the first uh, blessing. And the second blessing, why is that precious? Because God, then He takes on uh, the, uh, the body uh, and, uh, to, and multiplies uh, uh, um, His son, sons and daughters. So uh, He loves Eve through Adam, and He uh, loves her with, through the body of Adam, and so He feels uh, love and, uh, and joy, and so then uh, He exercises uh, uh, ownership through that. And, and so then um, Adam, um, Adam becomes a God's son and is a temple, and uh, uh, God is his subject partner, and he is his object. Uh, Adam is the po object partner and becomes God's uh, body. And so then the, he then uh, attends uh, God within him, and then horizontally speaking, uh, Adam is the subject partner and, and Eve the object partner. And uh, when they were growing up, they were growing up together, but in the end, uh, when they get, when they come to receive God's blessing, they come into a relationship of a subject and object. So then, the, so the the, the mind uh, resembles Adam's mind resembles uh, God's mind, but then each of their minds resemble God. But then, when their bodies uh, can only become one when they marry and they they uh, have uh, make love together. So then, then. So God has a uh, has a original positive and original negativity with him, but that is ex expressed in uh, as the in the terms of the two genders, two genders. So there is one, and they both come from one, the same one. So they must become one, and the, their minds become one first, and then next their bodies become one when they marry. So then the yeah, Adam Eve's uh, a marriage is the uh, marriage of the body of God, and then so. There is no one in the world, though, who is thinking thinking this way. There is no one in the world with that kind of value uh, system. So then, the, so this family, this is the second blessing, is incredibly precious. And then the third uh, blessing, to have dominion, he uh, created everything, and he said, "You do, you have dominion over it. You t take dominion." And so then, the we are the uh, owners. Then we have to have the mind of of God, the heart of God, and to. Uh, and exercise dominion with love, and when that happens, then who is going to be the who, who's going to be the the, the, the person dominating uh, the cosmos? That is going to be uh, me, the, each individual, and then and then when uh, human beings and uh, 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 the created world come together, that, that uh, realizes God's ideal of creation. <clears throat> so then, when we look at this, these three great blessings uh, we can see are very precious. And these the three uh, these are blessings. There cannot be any greater blessing than this. And these are that's why we call them the uh, three great blessings. So, in the previous hour, uh, we talked about the uh, idea ideology of education and the ideal of education. And in order to uh, accomplish that, uh, so that the we need to uh, establish the ideology of education so that that ideal can be accomplished. We begin with the uh, kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school, and all the way to university. This has been, so the mother and father, when they uh, have, uh, when they raise children, how are they going to raise? With at uh, what kind of a uh, purpose, uh, a goal are they going to have in uh, raising their children? So the, the what is the hope of the family when a, a child is born? I want him to become a, a, a president or a, a, a scientist or whatever. But the most important, that, of course, that's good. But also, but the most important, the core, is that the, the to be a good, good son. Good son and good daughter, a good husband and good wife, uh, to, to become a good groom and a good uh, a bridegroom, a bride, a good groom and a good bride, and so then, so then, so it become a, a true, um, true husband, a good husband, a true wife, a good person. Then they would be a good father and a good mother. They would be a true father and a true mother. So the the word true. Uh, comes from God it has to become from so the, so everything everyone has to love that person so it has to become that is the that is that is the purpose of, of creation for human beings so that is where that is where God wants the people to go so education uh, has to have that ideal that kind of ideal and and has to have an ideology that will bring about that ideal so then in so then we have to have a method for doing that so then so let's uh, look at the uh look at the uh, way of doing that so so in the so in the first is that uh, we have to 
we have to um, the most important is the absolute sex in other words not to eat out of the fruit so if we don't do that then we will, we can be perfected if we just don't eat, just keep that to a commandment and then they will be able to marry when the marry become married to marry means that the mind is already as one and then the body also becomes one and so the original substance is god and so he comes into uh, that uh, that union and so does he only the substance is a dual characteristics but the center of that is love and then and the is a mind and body so and uh, original uh, and then uh, positivity and negativity are not separate but they are uh, but they are but they are attributes and so and there's only one god and but in the, and, but you When those, um, but when that uh, God's uh, dual characteristics of positivity and negativity are actually appear in the substantial form, they appear as a two as a two genders of male and female, and so then they, then they become uh, substantial parents. And so in God's creation, uh, they become uh, parents, and they are true parents. And then, who accomplishes that uh, ideal? Adam and Eve must uh, do that. So then, the, the second. The second uh, 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 stage is that they, they have to have the the absolute uh, sex, and what kind of education? They must do the shimjong education then. So shim, but the root of a uh, shimjong education has to be absolute sex. So then, so then the, if once that uh, uh, absolute sex is broken, then the shimjong will become difficult for that from that point. So the, even if a person has a if a, if a young person uh, falls, if uh, something does wrong, then he receives judgment from that from that point. So he, he, he cannot accomplish his hope. He loses his strength. And so then, so the absolute sex uh, has, is connected to Shimjong. And, uh, and uh, uh, absolute sex is connected, centering on the Shimjong. And if we lose uh, absolute sex, then uh, that the Shimjong cannot mature. And without God's Shimjong, then uh, God's true love cannot appear. Uh, so, uh, centering on uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the substance of a Shimjong, centering on absolute sex, that's what we must become. That is Adam and that is Eve. Then those two people uh, meet and they meet and uh, perfect the family. So here, the children who are born here will always all be uh, good uh, citizens uh, because of the original substance of goodness is, is God, and so they will, uh, they are created with those elements, and so they will have that ideal, and they have accomplished that ideal, and so they become uh, good people and good citizens of the country. And the, that uh, family will be a good family, a family of goodness, and a true family. And so this, this world will become a world uh, is, uh, connected to God's ideal in uh, every part, just like uh, every cell in the body is connected to the brain. When uh, something, when someone does something wrong, then that uh, is the, he is connected directly to God by Shimjong, and so she, God's uh, Shimjong uh, uh, will be felt by every uh, one of the uh, humanity, and so the pain of one person's mistake will be felt by God and will be felt by every uh, citizen and by every person in the world, and so the, so everyone will have to do good even if uh, even if they don't want to. So this will be the ideal world, and. And if, if someone is just in the middle of the forest, do something bad in the middle of the forest, still, uh, that will be affect the entire world. And so, the ideal world will uh, will look like will be like the uh, the perfected human body. And so, uh, it will it will be a world that resembles the human body. And so, from so uh, from the brain to all the limbs and every cell will be connected. And if someone is hurting over here, then everyone will feel that pain. If someone is a, makes a mistake, then that that is connected to God, and so uh, all the uh, humanity will feel pain, and so one person's mistake will cause pain to everyone, and and then so uh, that will make a and they know how difficult uh, God will be if we uh, commit sin, and so we cannot commit sin. So that is the Shimjong world, and the world of love. So that kind of person, uh, that, so. Uh, that is how also the environment uh, will be uh, how exercise, we will exercise dominion over the environment. 
So everything, so it is a Shimjong education centered on uh, absolute uh, sex for the uh, to uh, correct character, and then and then and for them to to for for the family there has to be uh, education of uh, rules, I guess uh, rules uh, and. Education of norms, and the, I said that in the family that there's the the uh, family husband wife and uh, children, and uh, and there can be many uh, children in that, and so it's a uh, centering on those uh, children, and so and so the so in this so uh, there has to always be this uh, model of a. Uh, of a parent, a husband, wife, and, and children. Always, we have to have this model. And outside of this, nothing can be nothing can be accomplished. And the so the ideal always is a parent, a husband, wife, and children. And then the the, the family is to accomplish that uh, model, that rule. And so then, so we have what this call this a four position foundation, and we call this the will of God. And then so. We go for we work for the will of God. We say, "I'm I'm will, working for the will of God." We say we often say that. What is that will? What do we want to do? What we we are working? So to pay, uh, to protect the family and to build the family, and so then my object partner also has to be that. So and also the uh, the children have to live that way as well. That kind of uh, mind we have to have in our lives and to work that way, and and that is uh, my realm of living, and and that uh, basis uh, basics for that is in the family. So uh, the family is where God can feel joy as well. So the most important thing is the family. Why? The individual individual someday pass away. The individual cannot multiply. And so the second uh, blessing uh, gives us uh, multiplication. So then, here, where they come here? So, uh, and these, uh, also there are many siblings there, but, but there's the, basically the norms. The norms are in order, an orderly way. Uh, so that education has to be given in the family. How is that done? I'll give you an, an example. In the morning, the uh, the mother is uh, making uh, breakfast in the morning, and then the and then she's uh, uh, she takes all the the uh, all the food to the table to the family table, and uh, the silverware is there. But then there's a, a order to the way that where people sit. So where is who? Where is each person going to sit? Where is she going to place the uh, the father's uh, meal, the, the dishes? There's a place for the father to sit. Uh, uh, and where is the mother going to sit? Uh, where Where is the older the older brother, uh, the older sister? Uh, the uh, there is an order for people. So then, the mother then uh, has to educate the children that in this, and so on this table. So here, this is the father's position. Tell them this is the father's seat. And place the father's a meal there, and here's a silverware there, and also here's the older brothers, here's uh, older sisters, here's mother's position. So uh, everything is uh, set that way, and but uh, little children don't understand this, so uh, they just want to sit down anywhere and start eating, but uh, uh, they can, won't learn it. They won't learn it in first. But who did I say this place was? So they just uh, continuously educate them repetitive, repeatedly, and eventually they will understand. I told you this was not right. So then soon they will start to teach each other. Mom said this isn't right, that you can't sit there. They will start to teach each other. And then when we go go into the house, we take off our shoes. And we just, uh, um, one shoe goes uh, flies east and one shoe flies north and war west. And then we just uh, uh, run in and uh, just uh, following our friends. But also that too, there has to be order. There has to be, um, there's all, from... I uh, have to tell you here, the, these uh, shoes, don't just scatter your shoes when you take them off, uh, then uh, little children can understand as well. So if you teach them repeatedly like that, then eventually they'll come to understand and what they need to do. And so the mother will here put them, will arrange them here. Uh, these the, uh, father's uh, shoes go here. Uh, mother's shoes, do they go on the, the left or the right? The mother's shoes go on the left of the father's. Uh, so then uh, establish the order. And then one at a time, uh, beginning with the small details, the small things. Uh, then the children, uh, as they grow up and understand more, they will be able, they will become people who understand the norms and maintain the norms. But if you don't teach them that, they will just uh, want to be able. Then will learn that, and uh, so 
So, so that all happens in the family. So that is why the family is the training ground for love and shimjong. And until they mature, and to do it again and again. And that position is where we go. So a, a dancer, let's say a, a, a famous dancer, as he, so has, she, uh, the famous dancer will have to practice and train when other people are, are playing and having fun. That's how the, she becomes a, uh, the famous dancer. And the same thing is true of the sportsman. Uh, it's uh, difficult to become the best. So, so to become a, a son and daughter who can uh, uh, attend God, that doesn't just happen naturally. So, uh, not just uh, the so uh, this is a uh, to become to protect to maintain norms uh, and to learn the norms and become a, a real human being, a human like human being. So, so also the, the placement of the shoes, and and then and as soon as you go in, you can tell whether this uh, uh, this is a family that teaches the norms or not. You can just see how the people uh, take off their shoes. Well, Westerners just keep their shoes on, so you don't know. And so, the, but that's the content. So then, so then, also when we walk, the when a man and woman uh, are walking together, who who's on the right and who's on the left? Um, just a, uh, is it anyone on the right? No, there's a, a order that uh, that uh, uh, God is a, a God of uh, uh, principle, order, and law. And so there is a principle here. Too. There's a he, he uh, operates according to norms, and so. If if uh, two people are walking along and God is going to be there walking along with them, then the man should be on the right, the woman on the left. And that's how it has to be. And then, you see, you never saw a mother standing on the right, did you? When father, who who taught her that? Father taught her that. Father was centered, and and when a father stands here, then uh, she stands over here. So then, oh, what about sitting down? Then. Because father is no longer there, she can sit anywhere she wants? No. Father's on the right, mother on the left. And what about children? Children are also the, on the left. Oh, to uh, uh, next him. But the, uh, uh, for example, oldest son on the right, uh, the second son on the left. Uh, or you can say that the men on the right and um, girls on the, on the left. Are the, so anyway, there are norms. But just... Uh, But uh, there's a difference between someone who doesn't know this and someone who knows it but still doesn't practice it. And so you know, how about when they're in bed, when a mother and father are in the same bed? Can they just uh, uh, be on either side? No, there's also an order there. So then so then, uh, man on the right or, or woman on the right? Which is right? Which is correct? There's also an order for that. But then, well... If there's an order for everything else, but not in bed, no, there's still there. And see, there's a, a norm there, and there's a principle there, and there's a law. And so the principle uh, and the law and order is important. And that the norm, the norm is the law. It has to, it has to be maintained, it has to be, because that is principle. So why does the principle say that? Because uh, God created it that way. That is why he is the uh, original substance of principle. So then, all he created all uh, existences. So he is the uh, original substance of all existences. He is the first cause. Uh, uh, otherwise, why would we call him God? Why would we call him uh, the Father? So then, everything has a order and has a, a, a norms. So and and men and women have positions. So we have we are positional uh, existences, uh, beings that we have a, our so the so the man is the has the uh, male uh, subject partner and the woman is the female subject uh, object partner object partner that is the, our position so this is the principle and so you cannot uh, uh, just uh, move that and change that and the woman is born and then uh, she when a woman is a girl is born she uh, focuses on the uh, father. And then she will say, "Oh, I hope that I can marry someone like my father someday." And then, and then, and then, and then the heart that she had towards her father will go toward her husband after she marries, and she will follow her husband as she followed her uh, her father. She will husband, follow her husband that way, and then just a. Uh, uh, just as uh, she, 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 then, after the uh, the husband, 
the husband goes to the spirit world, and what does she say? I'm the owner. I'm uh, I'm the owner. Can she say? Well, she. But then she needs to uh, follow her son. Then after her, because the man is the subject partner. Uh, even if he's the son, he is still the uh, subject partner to her. Do you understand? Um, that is the absolute uh, standard. If the, this is the norm, the norm. This is the order, and this is the principle, and to see, this is the law. This principle is the law, and so that we, why we say uh, the uh, principle, uh, law, and order. So this has to be maintained, and so then, as we, uh, when we go into when we go to bed, and. Um, when when uh, people are young, they just uh, uh, embrace each other in bed. But then later on in life, uh, uh, they are apart, and then soon they uh, s uh, separate beds and separate uh, rooms. Uh, when they get older, well, when a crop is uh, planted, uh, it matures as time goes on, uh, and it has, but uh, but uh, the human beings who dominate, who are exercise dominion over uh, uh, creation, cannot do that. They have, must be more that way. So until we die. So always, because because of when we go to the spirit world, into that eternal world, there we will be harvesting the fruit. That will be the fruit that we them, because we were uh, we came into being through uh, love. So as we grow up, we grow in the love. We meet each other in love. We die uh, in love also. So then, in the uh, when we finally die, we we cannot die together. We, one of us will die uh, first, and then. Then it must uh, uh, wash that uh, spouse's uh, body with uh, clean water, uh, and then uh, pray over that the body uh, of the uh, of the spouse that has gone first. Then you can tell the uh, children to uh, leave the room for a minute, and then that wife, um, as she uh, as she uh, uh, she would uh, massage his body, uh, entire body from head to toe, and then pray. Uh, but when she prays, uh, she should uh, take hold of his uh, sexual organ, organ, and uh, pray there. Uh, give the last prayer as he goes to the spirit after he, when she's going to the spirit world. And this is the path that we must go. This is uh, this is why we were born. This is why we were grew up. This is why we lived, and this is why we we go to the spirit world. So uh, if we're going to, we cannot go to the kingdom of heaven by alone. So that is why in the kingdom of heaven, the basic unit is the family. And then, to, so how are we going to live today then? So now we're get growing older. Now, how, how, long, how much longer do you think we have? If a person is going to live to 100 and is now 80 years old, he only has eight, 20 years. How is he going to spend those 20 years? It's more precious than those first 80 years because this is the time of, uh, of uh, maturing the fruit. And so the today's life, the daily life is more important the older we get, the more precious it is. So the, you may think, what, what are uh, grandmother and grandmother, uh, grandfather and grandmother, what are they going to do? But no. The, they have to complete themselves before they go to spirit world, and they cannot, no one else can do that for them. So every day is more and more precious for them as they grow older. If one person goes first, then they are very painful in their heart, and they are lonely. And, uh, and and through that they also uh, they have to uh, feel they have to be, feel joy through that and also mature th uh, through that. So this education, so so the method for that is that Shimjong uh, unity and also norms uh, education of norms in the family. So uh, the uh, for to perfect uh, the character must have an absolute sex education. And in the family, there must be the education of norms, and in the and so then the uh, uh, parents must uh, give a, a downward love to the parents and the ver uh, vertical uh, horizontal love uh, between themselves as husband and wife, and then uh, children uh, children must give uh, upward uh, love towards their parents, and that is a show uh, that is filial piety uh, and uh, sin and sincerity. So, so the. Uh, so when we are young, we all we uh, we our focus is on our parents. We give our parents things, and we want to receive their loves. So then, but so we love our parents, but then we fight among our siblings. Then would the parents be happy then if we fight among siblings? So as we are we are growing up, but then but later on, we, the parents see that the siblings are fighting each other. 
So this is mine, that is mine, no, it's mine, this kind of thing. The parents are even more painful in their heart. So even if I don't, even if you don't do uh, feeling of piety towards me, I wish that you would get along together. This is, would be the uh, feeling of the parents. So uh, the one that, uh, so the, the sibling that uh, lives for the sake of other siblings is the one that will make the parents happy. And that is the best feeling of piety. Why do we do that? But, and actually God created us so that we could live that way, but because of the fall, we are not able to do that. And so, and, but uh, there are people though who try to live that way, and we must do that. So not just, but not just one moment, but for eternity. And that is so. Uh, what? That is God's ideal that we wanted, and that is the ideal world. Ideal world that just doesn't come uh, automatically. It's not something that uh, 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 that uh, God's just going to drop on this world. Uh, can the president uh, can the president uh, make this country one? No, the people have to do that in this world. So the, let's say everyone uh, receives the blessing and be, and becomes a mem and uh, uh, unification church members. Well, externally it would be one. But that would not be internally, because everyone has to be, become um, uh, mature uh, and, and uh, become uh, resemble, come to resemble God. And there has to be Shimjong. And then, so we are on the way now. Um, we are painful and we are screaming that it hurts, but uh, we are going that way. But anyway, we have to go there. So now, so once. When the uh, when the fetus uh, after uh, nine months, uh, where does it go? Uh, if it doesn't go out of the feet, uh, the womb, the mother will die and the baby will die. So whether it likes it or not, it has to leave the womb af after nine months. So, the, so but so the but, in, but uh, we can, depending on what we do, uh, we can uh, shorten the time or or maybe the time will be lengthened. But uh, one way or another, uh, we will establish that and. That the God sent us the Messiah uh, after 4,000 years, but we did not recognize him. And now the returning Messiah, the, the true parent, has come uh, 2,000 years yet. But no one else will come because now Adam, Jesus, and uh, the true parent, everything has to end at the third. So uh, he, he established Abraham, and then, uh, three, and then three generations, and he, uh, then everything was uh, completed. Uh, but uh, Adam, uh, sorry, Adam uh, I'm sorry, Abraham offered the sacrifice, but uh, Satan invaded because he did not cut the doves. So, but then he, within this family, though, with Isaac, and uh, Isaac was cut and he was offered on the altar, uh, and, he, and the not uh, cutting the dove was very, very uh, fearful that to was him because the, so because we have to be absolute because he, um, and so then Abraham for a hundred when he turned a hundred years old. He gave birth to uh, Isaac, but he had to offer Isaac himself on the altar. How serious that must have been. And then that was not all. That was not all. The people had to go to Egypt and, be, uh, and live there for 430 years. That, so God, imagine how, God, how much God was angry to see this uh, turn out this way. And so then, again, that wasn't the end. Then on that foundation, the, based on Esau and Jacob, uh, he centering on uh, Jacob and uh, to subjugate uh, Esau in that way, so uh, that was most difficult. Because Jacob was victory, uh, then he was received the uh, name of Israel, and it established the foundation to receive the Messiah on, on the family level. But uh, satanic side already had nations, and so but finally God side established a family, and uh, he, and so then the Messiah. Uh, had to have come at least on the foundation of the uh, nation so that the nation could protect him. And just a family was not enough. So then, the, so who, who is the first to know who is the Messiah? Satan. Satan knows, but does Satan want to protect the Messiah? No, he wants to kill him. You, but uh, God, though, already established the conditions uh, so that the Satan could not uh, invade. And he, so he uh, lived and did not die. Um, and then after he is born, then the human beings must accomplish our responsibility. So that we've learned this content through the word of God. And, but, uh, but even though we heard that word, we, there are many things that we uh, didn't recognize. It just, and uh, sort of some things that we tried to put into practice, but then gave up. 
uh, and uh, some people have just uh, been assimilated into the, the secular world, become secularized. So many of our blessed families have become secularized, and many of our, our leaders have become secularized. In God's word, God's life uh, are not there anymore, but they are now living as if they were just secular people. So then uh, today, uh, they, we don't want to go to that kind of position. That's not why we came here. So that is why we must do hundok. So the, 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 uh, these words are the record of Father's victory over uh, myriads of Satans. And so by reading them, uh, we can resurrect our shimjongs. And, and, and we can, what to resurrect means that, uh, that we start to commu uh, communicate in the spirit world? No. This is, that it means that the word comes into us. And our, my Shimjong explodes. That is why. That is how we become a real human being. Knowledge will not make my Shimjong explode. So then, the norm education is important, and then, and, and this this is to uh, create uh, human beings as we were intended to be. So then, so then, who who is, does this? It is the mother. The mother does this. The father has to go out, and uh, he's uh, working around, and uh, the, and, and then the uh, mother uh, uh, gives birth to the child, and uh, teach, teaches the child, uh, Richard nurtures the child, and then does the father have nothing to do with it? No, everything is comes is coming to us from the seed of the father, and so, and so the mother is doing all this so as to create, uh, so to nurture children who can be. Uh, filial piety for the uh, father. So don't tell the children, oh, your father's a terrible man. He can't even make any money. Uh, he's making us suffer like this in a poor house. No. So then that will destroy the family. But uh, no matter uh, how uh, insufficient he may be, uh, always uh, educate the children to, to uh, respect the father's authority. Uh, your father's a really great man. Uh, other people uh, may... Uh, think he's just a uh, just a, a person who cleans buildings, but uh, uh, but he's really a great man. So so mother has to teach the children that way. Why? Why is he great? Well, he has this, has this, this point, this point, this point, and it's so in they could teach them again and again that way, repeat, repeat, repeatedly, and then they are t then uh, they, then and they will they will see their father as being precious. Do you understand? Then, but then, but not doing that, but uh, uh, just uh, uh, centering on herself. Uh, well, that may be good for the mother, but uh, that tradition of that family will disappear. There will be no norms, and uh, there will be no way for God to dwell in that family because He is the God of principle. And so, norm education is important. Who does it? The mother. Father spoke about this quite often. He has many children, and and he said that the mother needed to uh, educate the children. When we look at uh, today, it really pains us in our heart. Why? Why couldn't the father educate his children? How much he must have wanted to do that. But that content, I will explain later, and I'll explain, Father had no choice but to do that. And I will, uh, I will uh, explain that uh, when we go through the third verse of the Family Pledge. We talk about the uh, four great realms of Shimjong. Uh, and the, because uh, uh, God could not educate uh, Adam and Eve. The, uh, the archangel had to do that. And he had to educate Adam and Eve from the position, from the position of God, not to, so that they would follow him. But that is uh, how the fall occurred. Those leaders, leaders must not make members their own, must not speak their own thoughts, must not make it so that members will, will uh, follow them. He must uh, raise members so that they follow God. They have to, so that they will become father's people. Who are we going to follow, our members? 
If we can say it this way, oh, so, oh yeah, they're good. So, so say, when they say when they say something, you can correct them by saying, uh, oh, but from the principal point of view, I think this is the way we should go. So then, they, then in a way, that, uh, just to treat them as uh, other members. Then, so, but uh, the, but uh, the process uh, came. Uh, we're in the process right now, but I think it is uh, uh, important for us to understand this. So, because they are the most precious persons, uh, but uh, I think uh, they are being trained right now so they can go to the uh, very precious, uh, most precious position, and so I'm grateful for that. So then the members, I think, but. Uh, but they cannot just um, uh, do it, uh, uh, treat them that way. But we must have within our heart the idea that they are the most precious persons. So that that will establish the uh, the order. We have to have a backbone in order to stand straight. In the same way, so the family pledge, uh, family pledge is like our uh, are like our backbone, and there is the marrow marrow in that. So we we must have that kind of a heart. And uh, uh, in their presence, uh, bow and to uh, be very grateful uh, for that. That is how we must feel. And so, just not uh, doing uh, as we want, and anyway, just randomly. And then they will. Uh, uh, they will also, but they will also be very humble and understand that this is the path that they must take. That would be very beautiful. So then, the norm education. What is it? Then, then next after norm education, there has to be uh, tech, uh, skill, a skill and uh, and uh, knowledge. I'll give me. I'll give you an example. Here, let's say there is a one tree here. Uh, it costs a hundred thousand dollars. It's a very pre precious tree. And um, you want to plant it in your garden, but then, but uh, it's about to die though, or pretty soon it looks like it's going to die. It's a hundred, it's a hundred thousand dollars a tree. So why, why is it dying? So because you don't have the knowledge about that tree, and you don't have the skill uh, to, uh, to, uh, to exercise dominion over that. But you, you bought it and you brought it home, but it's, it's dying. So in order to save it, you have to have a skill and you have to have knowledge. And so then, so, so uh, knowledge and a skill uh, are there to so that we can exercise dominion over uh, creation. Not, so, but they don't help us become become a hu uh, good human beings, though. So we must uh, we must be humble. Those who seek to be uh, high must go low, and those who seek to, uh, those who seek to go low, those who. Uh, And when you are fighting, the one who loses actually wins. If you try to win the fight, you will never win. You will always lose. And so the one that is humble will be, will be greater, and the one that uh, seeks to be greater will be uh, humbled. So then, how, what kind of person are we going to be? Uh, centering the Shimjong uh, education, centering on absolute sex, will help us become people of Shimjong. Uh, because, uh, because within uh, God's uh, song song, uh, there is a shimjong and a character, and that is the essential uh, attribute of God, and uh, is the, the and shimjong is the root of our, and it is the core of God's uh, character, and so, and so the so we become the the substantial being of God's uh, character. That is the uh, the first the first uh, goal of education, and in in the family, the son son and daughter, or the siblings that are. Uh, are born into the family to become God's uh, uh, son and daughter, to become uh, good uh, uh, citizens. 
and to become good human, uh, humanity. Um, the, then everyone, for everyone in the world uh, to, to uh, become uh, good. That would be multiplication. And so the family and then the uh, whole world and then uh, also they will be the owners of the spirit world as well when they go there. So in the spirit world, it is not people who, are, who have knowledge, money, or power that are the, uh, that are the owners. It is the people who have God's love because the spirit world is the world of love, the world of God's love. So in the, there's an error in this, on this earth, and um, here, here the, the, if this is, uh, if a, uh, human, uh, human beings uh, have uh, polluted the air, but God created it uh, pure, uh, clean. So, so we must, uh, we must uh, take care of the environment. As, if a, a environment uh, is polluted, then the people of that nation will, will be dying. And so then the, so then, uh, here's it. But a genius does not mean someone who's very smart. All of God's sons and daughters are geniuses in the, by the divine principle definition. So, so our eyes, nose, and ears are, are not the same. The eyes has its mission, the uh, ears have their mission, and the nose has its mission. Each of the hairs has its own mission. In the, in the, we can take that out, but uh, if the eye says, but the eye cannot say, hey, oh, we don't need you, just to go out. No. We, have, uh, we share uh, uh, the same area, so we have to share the same values because we come from the, the per, a precious person, a precious being. And so all we are born with certain uh, essential natures and then so then to and so then uh, the um, parents uh, say well we hope that this uh, person will, this child will become this way well maybe the child has no uh, possibility to become a doctor um, and Maybe in the neighborhood or in that city, there aren't any good hospitals. So the parents will say, well, why don't we ch uh, raise our children to become uh, doctors? As a, if, there's, if there's no house, then, uh, or if there's a, no, uh, or they can raise a, a carpenter or a construction worker, we can build a, a, a building uh, or a hospital. Uh, so they, so uh, right now, they're not studying us. Uh, uh, but uh, right now, our parents are not uh, creating geniuses. They are just uh, creating uh, fool of fools. But uh, when, uh, if you want to do soccer, do soccer. And then, so we have to know the fundamental, though. Oh, go ahead. But you have to. But when they are doing the soccer, if, he, if the child likes the, the soccer, you let him try that. And if he likes it, if he doesn't like it, it's not going to work. But you understand? So they have to find fun in something. Then, then they can become a wonderful genius. Let the child up draw if he likes to draw. That is how a genius can be developed. If he, wants to, if he likes music, then let him do music if he wants to do music. That is how he was born. If you keep him from doing what he wants to do, then he'll be unhappy. Human beings, each human being is a have received a certain uh, unique characteristics from God. And, but the parents uh, want to force their child into a certain direction. That's not the right way to do it. But just like individual tooth bodies, so there's a certain uh, work that, that that person must do. Maybe, maybe someone is good at uh, building, so building walls or building buildings. And he must, uh, must do that uh, joyful. Oh, well. Uh, and all you can do is build walls. If the parents say that, no, uh, he would be painful even if he's doing it. So, then, all right, would well, you like that? Okay, go ahead. All right, go ahead and do that. Uh, and help him, uh, praise him, and that is the way. To, that is the good way to do. So today, in the education, the uh, we talked about the ideal, 
and the uh, ideology uh, and the, uh, the method and the uh, purpose. We talked about that. And that is the uh, people of uh, character, uh, good people of goodness, uh, and uh, um, people of, that are genius. And this is the purpose of uh, true education. And this is so that uh, we can become sons and daughters of God. So there are many educational institutions in the uh, uh, world today, but they all would fail according to this test by this standard. So then. They, of course, they, each institution has the spirit that uh, of the founder, but none of them have the spirit of God in them. So I went to one uh, elementary school, and on the school they had the motto. The school's motto was sitting there. Do you know what it was? Uh, don't be late. Don't be late to class. That was the motto. Clean the clean the school well. Listen to the teacher. These this was the standard of that school. So all right. So they graduate from school. They still, uh, they're not going to be late. And clean, cleaning well is that the kind of person they're trying to produce? So, what, what they want is a, there has to be an education ideal that a person can follow for the, all of their lives, and that's the, and it has to be the three great uh, blessings uh, to, uh, to be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. So that is the, so that is how great uh, the principle is that our. Our Father uh, established. That is the greatness of the Unification Church's principle. But now they've buried this, these words, and they've made a goal to them asleep, and they were talking about something entirely different. Sermons? What, kind, what do you call that sermon? What are they teaching? What are the ministers teaching? A common sense, and, the, and they just uh, uh, checked it, uh, just a. Uh, uh, just to find some uh, a book and read from the book that someone else wrote. Uh, they are just a, uh, a boasting of their own uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, that is uh, that, uh, now that we have to change. We have to change. This has to be the human revolution, revolution of human beings. So the so then in the so so we have to know God. And we have to teach about the spirit world. And thirdly, we have to uh, teach our true parents. And after, if we know God and spirit world and true parent, then we will not to commit crime. So let's I'll go ahead and uh, try that, do that. And, uh, they don't know, and so, so they cause trouble. So know God with certainty, go, know the spirit world with certainty, and um, um, no, they must know. So the person who teaches that is the true parent. But then committing uh, sins, and then wondering how they can uh, liberate themselves from that uh, sin, and then they must. Uh, uh, but they have to establish uh, uh, indemnity conditions, uh, and uh, so if a person has sins but is just hiding and keeping that a secret, that's not. That's a very painful situation. It'd be better if he goes to jail and sits in jail. Uh, and establishes the conditions uh, to liberate himself from that sin. And that is, that is what we must do on earth. Uh, because if we go to spirit world, it will remain with us. Uh, so, if we on earth, the what is the most basic thing uh, to become uh, the sons and daughters of God? What is the uh, unification of education? It is the uh, unification of culture. As I said yesterday, culture. Is the uh, realm of our living of our daily life. So, if Adam and Eve had not uh, uh, had not fallen, their language would become the uh, language of humanity, and uh, their culture would have, their lifestyle would become the culture of humanity, and and their civilization would become the civilization of entire humanity. And if uh, uh, Adam had become had, had written something down, then or invented some letters, a, a writing system, then that would have been the writing system of the entire world. As in the, then if uh, Adam had received uh, had received perfection, then that would have been in the way. Then the, in the end, the uh, true parents, when the true parent comes, his uh, his uh, his language. Uh, his writing, his culture, his tradition, his art, these must be the center for uh, humanity in the future. But now, but now true, true parent has gone to, the true parent has gone to the spirit world. 
Now, for, since 70 or 80 years ago, if, we, if we, all of humanity had been receiving this education, uh, there would have been so much for uh, uh, God to do, for Father to do. Father would be able to do in one year what would otherwise take a thousand years. He would have been able to do that. And if that had happened, then the world today, God's will would have been completely established uh, before Father left the earth. But all the people who had been prepared uh, 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 betrayed him. And even people who followed him say, this doesn't match with my thinking. And they uh, went according to their own uh, thinking and their own judgment. And so uh, today there is much more difficulty than there would have been otherwise. So then, the, so let's look at the uh, three uh, elements of a cult of a unification of culture. First is the uh, unification of Xinjiang. Uh, the uh, substance of uh, original substance of Xinjiang is one, and so everyone can unite in that. So the, because there is love there, and so the so centering on Xinjiang, the uh, that becomes a center for uh, uh, thought or ideology. Um, and these must also be uh, uh, unified. And then, then our life, our, our uh, lifestyle, I guess you can say. So uh, men's lifestyle, women's lifestyle, uh, they are all the same. So because they, they, don't, they are not separate because they come from the same, same person. The families, each family is the same. You know, they, they have the same lifestyle. So the unification of lifestyle. So unification of, of uh, Xinjiang, of a uh, of ideology and of lifestyle. These are the things that uh, uh, we must uh, uh, accomplish, and that is the education uh, of, uh, that is done in the education of, um, of all people. Then, then uh, what is the ideology of, of, of true education that Father established? So if we were to summarize everything in uh, just uh, one phrase, it would be love heaven, love humanity, and love the nations. So the love heaven, Love human humanity and love the nation. This is uh, this is the ideal of Father's uh, ideology. So the kindergarten that he established in Korea, this is their uh, uh, motto, this, and also the middle school, the high school, also have this uh, same uh, uh, same motto, and also the university has also this same motto. So, do you think the university will be different? The kindergarten is different. No, every educational institution that Father. Uh, established to have this the same model love heaven, love humanity, and love the nation. And this is written on the gate, the entrance, uh, entry gate of uh, each school that the Father established in Korea. They're all the same. Also in Africa and in South America's way as well. Because uh, uh, throughout the world, wherever Father established an educational institution, uh, this, is, this was the same. Because if we love heaven, that is, if we love God, we will not commit sin. But if a person does not know, cannot love humanity, that person cannot love God. To love God, you must love humanity. And so, so they must love humanity. But uh, also, if you, uh, to love humanity, you must love the land. Because the elements for our, all human beings uh, uh, are in the land, and so the land is the is uh, our parent in a way. It's our second is a parent. So we have our physical parents who gave us birth and nurtured us, but uh, but uh, the uh, parent of our physical bodies is the land, and so we must respect the land and love the land, and then um, and then we have to go to God. Go to God the Father, because we came from Father, become from God the Father, and we uh, were created so as to have that, and uh, the uh, the creation uh, nurtured us and gave us its elements, and uh, to uh, if we hate creation is the same as cr hating our own uh, body. So the, if we love God, we uh, we also love my body. And if we love humanity, we love God, love heaven. They're all inter interconnected. So then uh, this is a true, uh, this is a how true education is done. Uh, it is a, uh, to become, uh, education to become uh, the uh, sons and daughters of God.
We're, we're going until three o'clock, aren't we? We've got about 25 minutes left. Okay. How can we resolve all the problems in the, in the real world that we live in? The dual characteristics are the key to solving all the problems in the real world. Why could we say that? Why, how can we say that? Because the world was created resembling God, but we forgot uh, God's presence and we came to resemble the way that Satan lives. That was the source of all the problems in the world, is the fact that we embodied and manifested Satan's characteristics. Therefore, God's dual characteristics are the key for us to understand and resolve all the problems in the real world. Everything is connected with this. What, what any philosophy, whatever uh, academic problem, whatever area of study or science uh, can be resolved through understanding the dual characteristics. So, first of all, Song Sang and Hyung Sang are the key to all to um, omnipotence. Omnipotence. God uh, has both Song Sang and Hyung Sang. Human beings also created with Song Sang and Hyung Sang. Human beings, uh, uh, God is invisible, but human beings is the visible substance. Within human beings, we have the mind, which is invisible, but the body is visible. So, what is the uh, attributes of God's song sung? It is true love, it is shim jong, it is personality. So, it, human beings who are created as a substantial image of God, we have to have character, we have to have true love, and shim jong and our internal nature. When we, move our, when we move our body and act, then we have to act in accordance with the principle, according to God's laws, according to, or according to God's order, by manifesting that content of our internal world. So, all of the created world were created uh, based on the model of human beings. So, whenever human beings come together, it's very important to achieve the right balance of Song Sang and Hyung Sang. And in this way, uh, we are able to, you know, manifest the 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 purpose of existence and the value of all things. So when we accomplish the purpose of existence for all things, then we can manifest the value of God's creation. So when we get people together, what needs to be the center? Mind and body. Let's get a number of people together. They have minds and bodies. There needs to be balance between these two things, balance between Song Sang and Hyung Sang. And in that way, we're able to accomplish the purpose of existence and establish an ideal values. For example, in the family. We are born in a family. Family is a basic unit for human existence. It is comprised of parents and children. So how do parents and children live together? There is a principle, there is law, there is order within God's um, song song. Therefore, within the family, this is the content of the family, the song song content. So we have to live according to the principle and the law. It's, is it the law that we create or the, the rules that we make? No, if we do that, then everybody would fight. In order to become one, it needs to, come, needs to be the, uh, the, the laws and the order and the principles that come from the one being uh, God. So when we follow that, then uh, we can get those people. People become people of true character and true shimjong. They come together and establish an ideal 
order, a standard of order that isn't aligned with God. So externally, the so we have to, in the way that, same way as uh, God's uh, Sung Sang directs, God's Kyung Sang. Our, our man, the way we live our lives needs to manifest um, the principle and order and law of God's nature. So, in the family, there needs to be family ethics. What is? What do we mean by ethics of the family? Before I taught, uh, when we spoke about education, we were talking about the norms, establishing the norms. So the Sung Sung element, which is the family ethics, we can call family ethics. Kajang Yuli. Parents. Uh, love, love going downwards towards the children. Compassion, compassion, which is, is something that is given. It is a grace that is given. Horizontally, a husband and wife. They need to harmonize. Harmony is the important value between husband and wife. So they need harmonizing love, harmonizing affection between husband and wife. When people perfect that, go to the spirit world, then the husband and wife become one in the spirit world. Um, you look at, the, look at the husband, and if you look keep deeply inside, you can see that the, the wife is within him. And then if you look at the woman, you look deeply inside, you see the husband. Wherever they go, they go together. If they're perfected, they actually become one within the spirit world. So they have one mind and one body. If we don't accomplish that, then it's painful in the spirit world, in, a, in, in God's ideal world, in the spirit. You can't hear these kinds of teachings anywhere we go. We can go to any university, any school in the world, any intellectual. Nobody is teaching this. Only True Father is teaching this, has taught this content. Okay, so a son who grows up in his family and then goes to school. What kind of... Um, in how, what a school is then comprised of two elements of the teachers and the students, teachers and the students working together. So based on family ethics, then the school needs to teach corresponding content. Some, some of the students at school, their parents don't have any money, they don't have much. Some families who have a lot of money, then they wear nice clothes, they have nice shoes. And if the student goes to school and doesn't have any, you know, clothes there or really bad shoes, and the teacher might say, well, what's, what's, what's going on in your family? Don't you have even enough money to, to buy proper shoes? If the teacher criticizes in this way, that's not good. He needs to uh, deal with that child with the same heart of a parent. And then maybe, maybe even buy a proper pair of shocks or buy a, a proper pair of shoes for that student, therefore with, with the heart of a parent. We need to love the children with the heart of the true parent and then the teachers in the school need to have the heart of a true teacher. The heart of the true teacher and the heart of true parent, very similar. Same content. Then true teacher would then go to the student who doesn't have any good shoes and say, you know, uh, I noticed that your shoes aren't in very good condition. I went out today and bought these shoes. Do you want to try them on, see if they fit? 
if if a teacher teaches his pupil with this kind of heart, then that that student will remember that teacher his entire life. Because the teacher's heart, the teacher's shimjong is in, in, imbued into that that pair of shoes that the teacher has given to the students. If it's a pair of shoes or if it's a pair of socks, same thing. This is the same fundamental uh, attitude and practice for uh, ministering. As a pastor in a church, we need to have that same kind of heart. Okay, so the student then uh, graduated school and then goes to uh, work in a, in a company, in a corporation. What about the... Um, the uh, the head of the corporation. He is the master of the corporation, and talks. Uh, how does he deal with with the um, his workers and em employees? What kind of heart needs to be looking at the employees with the same heart that the parents looked at the child, or the same heart that the teacher looked at that student? Then, if the if the if the head of the company then uh, takes care of his um, workers, for example, if they have some needs and 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 supplies the things that that worker needs to pay, help them out with something, not in the not in a way that everybody else sees, but silently or quietly, deals with them with the same heart, then then that worker will or that employee will will have an unchanging affection towards the uh, president of the company. So, just as the way in a, in, in a family, if the parent uh, forces the children to work and, and is only thinking about himself, and then the child is, is asked to do this and to do that and to do that, and the parent gives those instructions, sent it on their own benefit, that doesn't work within a family. In the same way, within within a corporation, if the president or the superior is instructing the employees to behave in a certain way, make money for us, do this, but with a selfish motivation there or self-centered motivation, then the corporation will not be smooth. So rather, the you know the the corporation needs to be creating a you know benefit for society, but then within the the corporation itself. They need to the, the the corporation president lives for the employees and the employees are motivated through Shimjong to live for the president. They need to manifest the culture of heart within the corporate level. So, you know, corporate ethics. We have family ethics, then you have uh, the, the the school ideology or, or central concept of school education needs to correspond then to the corporate ethics. What about on the national level? We have the leaders in the government and we have the people in the government. There's also a principle and law and order within that. There's the president of the nation has a proper way to behave, proper order to keep and correct, not just uh, push the, uh, the, uh, the people around for his own benefit. The ideology of that nation, the, the leadership ideology of the nation, needs to be based on eternal content. Uh, how to say, let's, there's this purpose here. For this purpose, let's, let's work hard. Let's work on this. It doesn't just sort of establish people, okay, in this position, you do this work. If you don't do it, I'm going to cut you out, I'm going to fire you. That's how the leaders work in the fallen world. And so in that case, you know, the citizens of the nation suffer and the government cannot proceed. The, the, the nation cannot 
advance forward into the future. And if that evolves and evolves, then the next leader comes up and does the same thing. The next one comes up the same thing. Eventually, it's going to be a dictatorship there. So, the Messiah is the Messiah forever and comes with God's ideal and God's principle. doesn't come as... God is also a dictatorship and the Messiah is also a dictator dictator but not dictators like in this world where you have to do what I say you have to do what I say but it's a, lo- a dictator of love therefore even when somebody is suffering then the Messiah feels that person suffering more than that person himself and then makes even greater effort for that person. That's true dictator of love. And then that person wants to give joy. So the person who comes with the ideology of the true father, true father attitude is the Messiah. The Messiah is a dictator of true love. Somebody who doesn't understand this will say, oh, in the Unification Church, they're dictators. But it's not dictatorship. Uh, so it's not dictators. Rather, it is, it is the dominion of love, the supervision of love, forever, for always for the benefit of the other. How can God create his ideal? By taking and stealing things from other people or, or just taking things from others? No. Father doesn't... The Messiah doesn't use anything for himself, but for the benefit of humankind. The Father creates organizations. Uh, If Father creates the organizations and then just left everything, no. Takes it. Who who is the president? Who who is the leader? Which which leader? Which president? Which corporation? And explains, okay, this is how we need to do things. This is the purpose of this organization. If you haven't done it well, okay, well then how? this is how you should do it. And then raising the leaders in all the different organizations. That's the Messiah's thought. Don't we have to do that as well? So leaders, you know, just not to saying, okay, listen to me and do what I say. No, that's not it. So, how can we live today? That's what's important. We don't just need to listen to the Word. It's pretty easy to talk about this and and talk about this in an education format. When we formally put this together, how can we set it all up? So, from this point, we have to not experience the principle just as a as a rational understanding or in with reason but we need to experience it through our life how can i apply this in my family how can i practice it in my daily life that's what's important in the world today everybody's forgotten it though in satan's world they've all God doesn't even have hope for religions don't have the answer. Science is over there. So where are we going to go? There's there's only one way for us to go forward. We have to look to heaven. We have walls here, walls here, walls behind us, walls in front of us. We own, The only way we can go is to look to heaven. We have to hear heaven's voice. We have to grab onto the knees of heaven and shed tears seeking for guidance. So the third point on the world sorry, not the third point, on the world level 
So in a nation, in a nation, they have to have the leadership ideology or the approach to leadership. In the world level, it needs to be unified. We need to have the same ideology of peace throughout the world, both for advanced nations and and developing nations. Not fighting against each other, nations fighting. We have to make a peaceful world. We have to make a world of peace. All of the leaders of the world need to put their goal on that, not just for the benefit of their own nation. Today we have the G20 group of nations. and They're the most advanced nations. They have a lot of money. They have a lot of power. And they meet several times a year. What are we going to do? And they meet together and they discuss on different topics. What are we going to do about the North Korea situation? What are we going to uh, do about this problem or that problem? But they're not solving the problems. Why? Because they're focused on the benefit of their own nation. Everybody's talking about building, a, you know, creating peace, but nobody's accomplishing it. What does the UN do? So even the UN is trying to do things, but, you know, Soviet Union and China are not supporting uh, uh, the resolution of the issues in North Korea. So the mission of the United Nations is finished. They're all living for themselves for their own nations. But nations need to live for all of humankind, for all of the world. We need to have a a, a movement of peace. When when a war arose in, in Korea, at the time of the Korean War, the world, the people of the world came to Korea and fought for the sake of Korea. And they came for peace to fight in Korea. But what's it like today? Culture has developed, civilization, technology. Many things have developed. But the more and more we develop on these external factors, then more and more people are focused on their own benefit and their own nations. And that's not good. It's not going to work. So we think about God's dual characteristics. Dual characteristics. Why are they important for solving the problems in this world? So let's think then not about the uh, the dual characteristics of Sung Sang Hyung Sang, but what about positivity and negativity, which are themselves attributes of Sung Sang and Hyung Sang. So the initial Sung Sang and Hyung Sang are from God. And then God's uh, positivity and negativity are secondary to his uh, primary uh, attributes. So human beings created in the same way. So individual perfection, training ourselves, this is a primary. The perfection of character is primary for human beings who are the children of God. So asceticism, I'm training, training my mind and body to become one, training myself through discipline. If I do that, then I can establish my family in the right way. This is a, a philosophy uh, in, in, that we can see in, these, uh, in certain universities in the Orient have this kind of philosophy. That, that's an application of the idea of positivity and negativity being um, secondary attributes of Sung Sang and Hyung Sang. So we may not be able to do this kind of education In the future, you will have to do this education. 
So record this, make notes, and then you know add add your experience from Father's words to this, and then teach in your family. You have to make people who can accomplish God's will, so that you can become such a family. We have to put in effort, invest ourselves. Okay, final conclusion then. So the final revolution in human history will be the revolution of human human revolution, revolution of humanity, human beings. We've had various revolutions. We've had industrial revolutions, economic, uh, uh, political revolutions, religious revolutions, cultural revolutions. But none of those revolutions brought a solution. They didn't solve the problems of the world. They did not bring a world of peace. They did not bring a world of happiness. Why? Because the only thing, they were trying to change the environment, but they were not the masters of the environment. No, we have to create a revolution of human beings themselves. How? How can we change people? In the past, revolutions were conducted through weapons, with knives and guns and power. But the final human revolution will be accomplished through true education. Not by power, military power or weapons, but through education. What kind of education? Not knowledge education, but rather human education, which educates people how to resemble God, resembles God's original Sung Sung, Shim Jong and Sarang. So, using what? We're using the principle of true love, centering on Shim Jong. Within Shim Jong, within love, there is purpose, there is direction. So, so in other words, the human revolution is the revolution of Shim Jong, which yields uh, true love and leads to true character. In, in conclusion, the Shim Jong Hyuk Myung, uh, sorry, <laughs> ultimately the Shim Jong revolution is a revolution of absolute love. It's through absolute love, revolution, we can create true families. True families. So the final revolution, what kind of revolution? Human revolution. Why did the Messiah come? To bring about revolution in human beings. It starts from one man and one woman. In order that they can become one. Centering on what? Centering on the man? Centering on the woman? Centering on God. And through that become one. That's the revolution that remains to be executed. All of you here are revolutionaries. But I'm not saying pick up weapons, guns and knives. Educate for true love. Do, do you think you can be good revolutionaries? That means that you're going to have to be good in education. <laughs> 